when there's more restrictive underwriting or it's harder to qualify because rates go up and your payment goes up. So it becomes a bigger piece of your income. Any time that happens, when you, we look at the number of notes created, that tends to go up when, when that availability goes down. Tracy, I do have a question. Yes. I know that Not just interest rates are <laughs> interest rates are really low. Yeah. Why would anyone uh, need or want to get owner financing in such a low rate environment? They don't know qualify. That's a great question. And the answer really is, is there somebody you call a penalty box buyer? <laughs> they are still a good credit risk, but for whatever reasons, they don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's of a conventional lender. And if you look at the mortgage affordability index and the mortgage availability index, it's interesting. There's all this inexpensive money out there, but the criteria to qualify for it is actually more restrictive right now than it has been in the past. Now, because rates are lower, the payment is lower. So that does make them qualify a little easier. But as far as down payment mm -hmm. and credit scores, those are actually more restrictive right now than they have been. Now, I understand why nobody wants another subprime meltdown like 2000, right. 2010. So I get it. But mm -hmm. what that means is we actually see people who don't have 20% down, or maybe they have a 650 credit score and they're, they're still a good candidate uh, and they would be willing to buy for a little bit higher interest rate with seller financing. Then they can get whatever issues, they can build equity if that was down payment issue, or they can clean up whatever was on their credit and then maybe refinance later at those lower rates when they become conventional again. The other part of it is there's a lot of people out there that are investors and after they get, you know, four or five, uh, regular conventional loans, it gets harder for that. And so they obviously make great uh, candidates for hard money lenders as well, but they also can make great candidates for buying with seller financing. Yeah. And your self-employed folks that yeah. uh, can't show all their income on a tax return. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also want to get to the side of if you are a real estate investor and you're buying, let's say lower priced homes and you want to be able to maximize your investment return. A great way to do it is to sell that property with owner financing. And that way you make income on the financing as well as uh, money on the, the, the sale of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my question would be over the time span that you've been doing this, have you noticed an uptick or downtick with, as, as you know, Bill pointed out, difference in rates mm -hmm. on the conventional side. So when rates rise on the conventional side, does seller financing rise as well? Does it follow that? Or is there some other mechanism that it follows? That is a great question. And yes, it actually follows that mortgage availability index chart. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah. if you research for that, that they, they published uh, the mortgage, uh, avail, uh, mortgage affordability index and that we see when there's more restrictive underwriting or it's harder to qualify because rates go up and your payment goes up. So it becomes a bigger piece of your income. Any time that happens, when you, we look at the number of notes created, that tends to go up when, when that availability goes down. <laughs>